Imagine for a moment popping a pill before bed that costs about $13.50. Now imagine waking up the next morning to find that the price of the exact same pill jumped to $750 overnight. That is just what happened to one drug. Meg Terrell joining us now with that story and the man who's behind that price spike. Meg. Thank you, Brian. And Martin Scarelli joins us now from the NASDAQ. He's the CEO of Touring Pharmaceuticals. Martin, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, you guys have said that the reason you increased this price so much after acquiring the drug was in order to do the research and development to develop a better version of Daraprim. I just got off the phone with an HIV doctor who told me they don't need a better version of this drug. What are you doing here? Yeah, that's not true. Uh, the, there's a recent paper that suggests that uh, two patients died uh, due to autoimmune uh, um, encephalitis uh, from toxoplasmosis. So there's a lot of people who die of toxoplasmosis every year that, uh, and this field desperately needs new ways to treat toxoplasmosis. For instance, the current drugs right now target, target the folate receptor of the bug. There's no other way to, to, to kill toxoplasmosis as, as of right now. So we're working hard on uh, trying to find new ways to do that. So what a lot of companies do is raise venture capital funding when they see an important market for a drug, uh, rather than raising the price on the current patients who need it to survive and who have no other choice but to take it and pay the higher price. Why wouldn't you go that route? Well, we did raise uh, one of the largest Series A financings in history for a biotech company. We uh, raised uh, over $90 million. And uh, we also feel that this is the more appropriate price for Daraprim. Uh, at this price, Daraprim is still actually on the low end of what orphan drugs cost, and we're certainly not the first company to raise drug prices. So Hillary Clinton comes out today citing the story about you guys in the New York Times causing quite a stir in the biotech industry. Did you not expect a 5,000 percent price increase would result in that kind of attention? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, it really depends on how uh, focused people want to be on the industry. You know, at the end of the day, there have been much larger drug price increases by much bigger drug companies that actually uh, you would argue uh, large multi-billion dollar companies with lots of cash don't necessarily need to do something like this. Turing is a very small company. It's a new company, and we're not a profitable company. So for us to try to exist and, and maintain a profit, I think is pretty reasonable. Most biotech companies don't actually maintain a profit for decades until they get drugs onto the market. Why are you guys different? Well, I think of us as a pharmaceutical company, uh, not necessarily a biotechnology company. And, and I think that distinction is not exactly clear uh, either way. But I think profits are a great thing to sustain uh, uh, your uh, corporate existence. Martin, you had mentioned that you're a small uh, company and you're gonna use uh, the price increase, the difference to do R&D to find a better cure for toxoplasmosis. What kind of R&D staff do you have? Uh, what, sort of, what amount of money do you plan on, on devoting to research and develop, development? Sure, so, so we have about 25 people in R&D and we have open positions for another 25. We do medicinal chemistry in vivo and vitro pharmacology. I helped the team out quite a bit, uh, so I'm really excited to develop new drugs for, for toxoplasmosis. We're going to contribute the majority of our revenue to doing that. So in essence, we're taking the revenue from Daraprim and trying to come up with a better, safer, more effective version of it. Okay. And uh, you were a hedge fund manager before. Yes. You probably could have guessed, as Meg had mentioned, that this is going to cause a stir. And we actually saw the IBB, the Biotech Index ETF, go down about 5% on Hillary's tweet. Did you anticipate that that would happen? Are you in any way invested in biotech through a short, either personally or yeah, through I, another fund? I have a small portfolio, but uh, I don't really watch the stock market on a day-to-day -day basis. So does that mean that you're, you, do you have any position in biotech stocks? Are you very, short, very, any, very are you short any of them? Yeah, I'm short a few biotech stocks, but I'm also long yeah. a few biotech stocks. And um, you know, I don't have a specific net short uh, interest in biotech or anything. Martin, I got to ask you, doctors have come out saying that you guys need to revise your pricing strategy because patients can't get access to these drugs. This HIV doc I just spoke with said they're trying to hoard it in order to provide it. Do you feel badly about what's happening? No, in fact, we're increasing access to patients, Meg. I think that, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, dramatically increasing the access to Daraprim, uh, lowering copays, giving more drug away for free. Half of the drug we give away is for $1. So I'm not sure what you're talking about. You know, Martin, when you bought the company, this was a $1 pill before Core Labs bought it, then it went to $13.50, now you bought it, now it goes to over $700. Would you bought, when you bought this company, did you buy it because you knew that you could raise the price? We definitely planned on raising the price, that's for sure. We paid uh, a very, very large amount to buy an unprofitable medicine. We can't continue to, make, uh, to lose money uh, on the drug at that price, so we, we took it to a price where we can make a comfortable profit, but not any kind of ridiculous profit. They're much but you're, larger. But you're, I assume, you are a free markets gentleman, are you not? 
Uh, sure. Okay. Whatever so, that means. How, why do you think that? Why do you think the drug was priced at thirteen fifty before? Somebody thought that was the right price yeah. for this drug. Markets the aren't market that rational. The market said thirteen and a half worked. Yeah, if you look at drugs like uh, Savaldi, for instance, Daraprim is less expensive than Savaldi, despite the fact that it treats a, a disease that's far more severe and far less common. So if you think about free markets and fair price, it's, it's pretty clear that uh, you know, Daraprim was not priced appropriately does, does previously. Daraprim, does Daraprim actually cure toxoplasmosis? It does. It does, okay. It does. It eliminates So there's the a finite end, just like for the hepatitis C drug. It's, in fact, a very short uh, treatment administration, which makes it even less expensive than most orphan drugs, which you have to take for years and years and years. Can you imagine taking a drug that costs $500,000 for the rest of your life every single year? For, by comparison, a cure, a cure treatment of Daraprim is about $50,000. It's about half the price of uh, hep C uh, cure regimens right now. Martin, uh, we do appreciate you coming. I got to ask you one more question. You know, in response to all of this attention and doctors and patient groups saying they can't access this drug, are you going to change the price? No. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.